gosh, this is so exciting! This is so cozy, I love this. It probably looks like it's like the dead of the night or like early, early in the morning. It's 6.30pm on a Friday night and this this is where I am. Hello guys and welcome to this video. I'm so excited for this. A, because it's just something I'm so passionate about, but B, you guys have been requesting this, which I love. I absolutely love. We're going to be chatting through how I study the Bible. Before I say anything further, I do want to make it super clear, and I feel like if you've clicked on this video you already know this, but there is no one right way of studying the Bible. There are so many different ways to study the Bible and so many incredible resources out there. This is just the current method that I've landed on in my current season of life. I have been reading the Bible now and have been a Christian for four years and over that time my method has changed quite dramatically. Main big difference, I went from reading the Bible to studying the Bible. Two very different things. I am very blessed in this season of my life that I do have a lot of time that I'm able to put into my Bible study. So if you're looking for a quick like microwave way of getting your bible study in this is not the video for you total transparency what i'm about to show you normally takes me 30 to 60 minutes a day so if you're looking for the express version this is i'm sorry this is not where you're gonna find it but i do encourage you to sit back and just see this video through because there may be some things that i say along the way that you can incorporate into a microwave express version of bible studying my first step to studying the bible is Doing it at a time that works for you, where you've got minimal distractions, you're not going to be in a rush. Like, let's be honest, when you're in a rush, you're not really paying attention to what you're doing. Find a time that works for you. For me, that is first thing in the morning. The first thing I do when I open my eyes in the morning, actually, it's winter, the first thing I do is put a hoodie on. Second thing that I do is pick up my Bible, hop back into bed, and do my little Bible study. You may not be a morning person, mornings may not work for you, you may find it works on your lunch break, you may find it best when you're getting ready for bed, whatever works for you. I would encourage you though to have it stack. You may say to yourself, I want to study the Bible before bed, but then you hop into bed, you're like, oh, it's time to go to sleep and I forgot. Something you should do every night before you go to bed is brush your teeth. For example, to have it stack, you brush your teeth and immediately, boom, Bible study happens and then you don't end up forgetting it. This video is not Atomic Habits, so let's move on. Second thing that is super important is to set the mood. I have replicated my 5 o'clock mood for you guys at 6.30pm on this glorious Friday evening. So we'll switch over to this camera and you'll see I have a fireplace crackling away on the TV. There's my cozy mood. Fireplace on, bedside lamps on, hoodie on. You just got to set the mood so that you feel nice and comfortable and cozy and ready to dive into the word. Step 3. Praying hands. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You do not need to pray with your hands like this. Step three is prayer. Take a moment, even if it's just 30 seconds. Honestly, often it's not even that. Just ask God to speak to me through what I'm about to read. Thank him for the day. Thank him for the blessing of actually being able to read the Bible. So yeah, say a quick little prayer. Invite God into the space. Invite a spirit in. I find that this really, that really, really sets the tone. Now, we pick up the Bible. The way that I've been studying the Bible this year is different to how I've ever studied it before. Like obviously the way I study the Bible is going to evolve a lot as I go through life, but at the moment I'm loving it. I'm having the best time. I've read the Bible several different ways before. I have done it like front to back a couple of times, like two different ways. Both of those ways, they were very much quantity over quality, whereas this year I'm super focused on quality over quantity. So I've stripped it right back and I'm reading one chapter per day alongside Bible commentary, which I'll talk about shortly. So far I'm up to Joshua 12. First thing I do is I read the chapter that I'm going to be studying for that day from top to bottom just to get an idea of what I'm actually dealing with. So I'll be back with you in just a second and then we'll go on to this Bible commentary that I was talking about. This chapter is a prime example of why I study the Bible with a Bible commentary because this is one of those chapters where it's like then they defeated this king and this army and this tribe and this nation and invaded this camp and blah 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 I'm like I don't know what any of those things are. That is where the Bible commentary comes in really handy. You actually slow down and figure out like who these people are and how they all link in together and you're like oh my gosh I would never have guessed. The Bible commentary that I use is called Enduring Word. They do have an app and they also have a website. Every single book, every single chapter, every single verse basically has commentary on it on this website. It is an incredible resource and it's all free which is amazing. After I've read the chapter from top to bottom 
I open up the Enduring Word. And from the Enduring Word app, it breaks it down basically verse by verse. And it gives you extra context, which is stunning. We love that. The Bible that I have, I wish I could link it. I don't think they sell these ones anymore. It's an NLT journaling Bible. And I have good old trusty highlighter. So this is an example of what I do. I highlight whatever text has been referred to in Enduring Word. And then I just write a little blurb next to it. When I note something down, I always write the date next to it. And it's really cool because I have had this Bible for two and a half years, I think. So it's got notes in it from back when I was very early on in my faith journey. And it's actually kind of cute to see like the little notes that I wrote. Go through it with Enduring Word verse by verse and just read the extra context they give. And if it's something that stands out to me or something that helps me to understand what's going on, I'll highlight it, write it, date it, and move on to the next thing. Let me do this and I will check back in with you in a second. Reread the chapter again alongside the commentary. We have learned some new things that I completely skimmed over the first time I read through it. So I've read it once, just through, top to bottom. I've read it again alongside the commentary, and guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna read it again for a third and a final time. But this time when I read it, I just go back and read the bits that I highlighted and the notes that I wrote alongside it. So let's do that real quick. So now that we have read it, for a third and final time, one thing, you may need to go back and read it for a fourth time just if you haven't already picked up on something the first three times you read it, but I always try and take something with me that I have read in the chapter with me into my day, which can be tricky sometimes, especially when you're in the Old Testament particularly. It can be a little bit of a challenge, especially a chapter like this, basically for like a little bit of context on Joshua 12, this chapter talks about the kings that uh, Israel defeated on both sides of the Jordan River when they were coming in to take the promised land and it basically just outlines and lists them all off. Anyway, what I would take from this is that when God gives us a task, gives us something to do, we may not have the opportunity to see it through to completion but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't do it. This is talking about how Moses started the journey of Israel entering the promised land. He didn't see it through to completion but he enabled them on the process. He was the hands and feet. He guided them along. And that is how I study the Bible. So to give you guys a recap, top to bottom, first of all, find a time that works for you. Secondly, set the mood. Thirdly, pray about it. Pray into it. Pray before you get started. Fourthly, read it and study it. We start by reading it from top to bottom, once through, then we whip out the commentary, read it again, we take notes, then we read our notes, and then we have find a takeaway that we can take with us into our day. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I study the Bible. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, comment your favourite Bible verse. Let's get some encouragement happening down in the comments. And apart from that, stay safe, stay well, Jesus loves you, and I will see you in my next video. <laughs>